Welcome to Toffee Blue View, your source for all things Everton. I'm Jerry, and uh, although it may not sound like me, like normal, it's uh, just that little bit sexier. You're welcome, listeners. Uh, so, uh, Max is here, Terry is here. So, guys, City Reaction. Starting with Max, because I teased it in the podcast, but uh, Max... Were you cold? <laughs> Do you know what, right? I mean, I was on the second tier, so that might have had, you know, that might have put me at a bit of an advantage oh, in yeah? comparison to others. But it, I wasn't as cold as some people made it out to be. Um, I think maybe I think it was after we were one 0 down. It was quite funny. The fellow in front of me, I think he only had like a polo shirt on. God knows why. But, like <laughs> he, he was, he was, he was debating on getting off. And he said his mate was trying to get him to stay. He turned around to his mate. He went, "I'm not standing in this cold, freezing me tits off watching that." <laughs> and I think that it sums up how the performance was. To be honest, mm. it wasn't a very good performance. Um, I think from the um, we were in it until they scored the first goal. I think we kind of cheaply give away that first goal. And at the, the moment you go one 0 down against Manchester City at the Etihad, I think you're fighting too much of an uphill battle. Um, I compared it when I was doing my five things article to basically a trip to the Camp Nou, which, I mean, it lacks atmosphere, to say the least. The atmosphere was absolutely abysmal. But how good are Manchester City? Yeah. I mean, we can't overreact to it. They are literally, in my opinion, the greatest Premier League side I've seen. And, you know, the, the moment you try and play out from the back or the moment they lose possession, they are creating shapes and closing you down at all angles. And there's not much you can do about it unless you know how to beat them. I think Liverpool, more than anyone else, have you know, provided the blueprint on how to beat them, and that's pretty much to me, fire with fire. Um, we showed them far too much respect by you know, opting to go with the five at the back from the off. I think we, we'd lost it from there, to be honest. But um, you know, we can't get too disheartened about it. It's just, I think the only reason some people are overreacting at the moment is because we didn't pick up a win against uh, Watford, mm, Newcastle, yeah. and we should have got points out of that Liverpool game. So this makes this run look a lot worse than what it actually is. Yeah, I saw. I see a lot of negativity. Uh, you know, <laughs> our supporters overreacting. No, you know, <laughs> really. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot of people are are down, and I think you call that right, Max. The idea that you know having what we consider two two games where we should have been grabbing six and we grabbed two. Two points from our past mm. four matches doesn't really make us feel warm and fuzzy. Uh, but, mm. Terry, I, I got to be honest, like, I rewatched the game today because that's what I do. I rewatch all the games like four times. No, I, I didn't really get to watch it very much on Saturday because my kids had games. So uh, I after watching it today, though, it's pretty fresh. I didn't think it was that bad. Do you think it was as bad as what everybody's saying, Terry? I mean, uh, I'll give my reasons in a minute. Um. Uh, no, I, I don't. I'm, I'm more with you. I mean, I, I agree with the bulk of what Max said, but it's we were unfortunate. Like we we don't need to be given a team like Man City free like we did. Like it, there was some individual errors in there which cost goals, but the biggest thing was. The, the missed opportunities, like the, the, the yeah, shot. It, from we made Richard, chances. The shot from Richarlison that he, he skies over and and some of the other like good uh, attacking opportunities. We had we were well in the game. But if you're if you're gonna go away to Man City, you cannot go and A give away a goal in the manner we gave away the first one and then B not take a chance when it comes to you. It's like you need everything to be clicking. You can't you can't be wasteful and beat Man City. They are not compatible the two things. I mean, I think the the main issue has already been being touched on. It's been exacerbated by the fact that we had the two home games where I mean the second you start banking on on wins is when ever you know <laughs> and, and remind you not to do that. So when when you make when you make plans when you start putting it in the bank before you've got them, God laughs. Oh, so nice. it's it's a I understand people being frustrated because it's a, it's not just this game in isolation. It's the build up of should they got to draw against Liverpool and then let them win in like really painful fashion. We were good enough to have beaten Newcastle in the first half and then Watford. We were the masters of our own demise by having a mad two three minutes mm -hmm. and 
having to rescue a point. Um, we were just like the other top six teams we've played so far. We were well in this game. We we gave them a match, and we just a bit of naivety. I think was the problem. We weren't taking our chances. We were being silly at the back with the ball and we saw a few times that if we actually pressed them high and then went over the top with the ball they, they were very uncomfortable they didn't like it and we didn't stick to it we went we we started playing out from the back which i'm not again i'm not against full time but you don't do it against man city mm. Look at arsenal at the beginning of the season arsenal tried it and got absolutely mullered for their efforts the three at the back I don't like it. I understand why he's done it because of Idris Gay yeah. being injured and the fact that it's Man City. They're not. I, I don't think Silva will employ three at the back very often. Um, we might not even see it again this season. But I, it's not a normal game. It's what <laughs> it, no one goes apart from perhaps Liverpool. No one goes and plays Man City and plays their own game. They always try and accommodate and adjust themselves to the City team and. We found out when we got onto the pitch that probably wasn't the best way to go. There was no way of knowing before and that we were going to have so much joy going attacking them. But before the match, I, I was I was bang up for the for the team he put out and thought that's probably as best as you can expect, given the key injury to the you know there's no like for like player for the Drissa Gay. There's holding midfielders, but they haven't played for weeks and weeks and weeks, and they don't do the same job as him anyway. So it would have been quite unfair to bring one in and go. Yeah, you're going to mark Bernardo Silva yeah. and, and you know, the, the, the best attacking midfielders in the country. So, frustrating, not the end of the world. Honestly, I, we've got three games coming up. Tottenham will be a difficult one, and then we've got the two away games. Mike, I, I can see us getting... Um, if we win two out of the three of those, it's not easy. But if we get a, if we get the next when the next win comes, I think everyone will just yeah. ease up a little <laughs> bit, the tension. And then you've got... The transfer window being mm. open and people will really start changing their attitude then. Hopefully. Yeah. Jack Wilshire, all right. <laughs> that was remembering <laughs> times long past. I I, I got to be honest. I I didn't think we did poorly. I I saw like you guys. I saw Silva's the wheels going in Silva's head. The idea of just a gay being out. It's almost like he just wants to put the 11 best players out there. You know what I mean? So he's thinking, would I rather have Zuma on the field or Tom Davies on the field? Well, it depends on what you're trying to do situationally, you know? And I think situationally you're playing against a team that creates a lot of chances and does a lot of op- overlapping and runs behind and Pep actually commented on us well, having three in the three at the back. It was actually shutting them down a lot. Well, if you, if you look in particular with, I think it, it was in, in in prime example for each three of their goals. It was bread and butter for them, pu- pushing the ball out into the wide positions, squaring it into the middle, and you know, easy easy finish. It they they still look so much better yeah. than us. That I think that was the point I was trying mm-hmm. to make. We did make it look easy. We made it easy for them, a lot easier than it should have been, anyway. And to me, that that shows volumes of just how inexperienced we are just yet in terms of playing. I the think back it's there. also my biggest issue that I saw was basic communication between our our center backs. Okay. Je- yes, Mina made that bad pass for the first goal. Okay. However, Jesus made that run behind. Keen does not go with him. Zuma does not pick it up. Okay, mm. who's supposed to be on that? All right, well, they're hardly ever in that situation in games. You know, when it comes to uh-huh. Zuma playing on that side and Keane being here, it just doesn't happen often. So that happens, right? Then on uh, Jesus, I mean, by the way, the cross from, was it Sané on that one? Pinpoint. Yeah. Uh, that's what I mean, though. It's the bread and butter. They're, they're so used to doing that now, and they get, they get goals mm-hmm. for fun doing that move over and over and over it was frustrating because if you you know if you want to damage city you need them men pushing forward on the mm-hmm. counter and on, on the counter press and ha- playing that five at the back it just limits us limited us in terms mm-hmm. of numbers you know we've we got we've got three center halves in the box and when we're trying to push out and hit them on the counter we can't because we haven't got enough men oh, it, yeah. you know because the way you know we just when we didn't take our chances when they came so I am disappointed. I do think we should have played a lot mm. better 
phys- you know, physically being there, I can say I don't think we played as well as as personally used to have said. I thought we were poor, and I think we've got to, you know, we've got to answer that against Tottenham. That's another big game. That we've well, got I think to a lot of people would agree with you on that, Max. I uh, I just thought that because we created chances and we didn't finish them, it's the way we've done on every single top six side. Every single one we've played, we've had chances and we have not been clinical. Every mm. single time. And every single game, the opposition has had opportunities as well. It usually, in terms of opportunities, it's one of those things. If we took our chances, you have a different game. All right? Richarlison yeah. had two chances, very clear chances, that he skied over, mm. both of them. All right? He's a good player, uh, but he made some mistakes. You know, it happens. Mm. I think that- Credit's got to go to Calvert yes. Lewin as well. There, yeah, you you can't question his ability in the air now. The amount of decent headers that he scored. And he almost us. had that little behind the you back know. flick. Don't yeah. that it was it was just painful. So for me good looking point. though. I didn't, even, like, oh. I, I didn't I didn't expect it to go. In. I didn't either. But when he did it, I was like, <gasps> <laughs> oh man. He really impressed me. He he looks uh, better this year. Like I. I he was useful last year for you know a job. He was overplayed last year and overexposed, but mm-hmm. it's a really good game. He might Silver's laid the gauntlet down to him now. Going to see if you can be our number nine because clearly no one else has, has grasped it. He, I think we might see a little bit more of him coming mm-hmm. up, especially these two away games around mm-hmm. Christmas mm-hmm. because the, his energy and strength and that, that he he's like a perfect away player where you're gonna need his physical mm-hmm. skills. Whereas at home, he's, he gets tested a little bit more with the ball because teams tend to sit back against us and that's where he tends to struggle. But mm. he's every time he's played against City, I think he's had a good game. Yeah. Mm. There's no mean feat for a young player, is it? Let's be honest. Mm. I, uh, I, I think he gradually settled in. He looked a little excitable, lost possession early, uh, gradually got more and more confident. And when you see some of the things he was doing on the ball, it was exciting. It was great to see. You want to see a young kid and doing you- that. You see when you see when when Luckman came yes. on in particular, I think that brought his game up another level too. Luckman again, off the bench, big boost. Mm. When we got when we got rid of the five at the back and went to four at the back and actually kind of we went with that. By the way, playing at second you know, center mid position for Sigurdsson doesn't really do a lot for him. No, again, I think that's a product of. Messing about with the five back, I think that situation would never arise if we just stuck to our guns. The moment that we took, we moved Kurt Zuma out to right back. He was exposed mm-hmm. straight away because that's where their their other goal came from. So it was so you know I just you could tell they just spotted our weaknesses and and, and exploited them yeah. fully, um, which is a bit concerning because it just it, it you know it speaks to me that we're just nowhere near that level yet. But, you know, you've got to look at it with some hindsight. How many years into their takeover are they compared to us? We've still got, you know, a good few years to go. More years with their manager. Um, We haven't even had a year with our manager. Uh, Mm. And Pep actually did speak positively about about our play, about uh, our squad. Um, He knew we had chances. He did. Um, Mm. It was totally opposite of last season. When I'm thinking specifically about our game at, at home, uh, when we played at Goodison against them, uh, that was one of the more depressing football matches I've watched, just because we barely touched the ball. Yeah. This time, when we got the ball, we looked comfortable. We looked comfortable in the. It, it, there's just something. There's some. There's some sort of mental hurdle we need to get past about getting an opportunity in front of the net. We had some. We did, you know, we've, and if we're going to be competing with these teams that dominate possession, you have to take advantage when you get it. That's the thing that just crushed me. Um, it was frustrating, but again, I'm not as dis- as depressed as a lot of people are on this one, because I, I thought they, I, I see progress, you know, I really do. Uh, I didn't think we were straight up dominated, you know? I didn't think it was mm. just total domination. If it was, then we wouldn't have had the opportunities we had. You know, I'd, I'd love to see us put more on goal. How about that? Instead of putting them in the bleachers, you know, uh, that'd be mm. that'd be a start. Put some make, make Ederson work. 
um, yeah, I didn't really have any problems with the officiating. Didn't really have any, you know, I just thought they're, they're good. And I thought we did what we could on in terms of uh, in terms of formation. And I love seeing a formation switch from a manager, realizing we need goals, so let's change it up and not per- persisting with the same plan. You know what I mean? I like seeing that every once in a while. Well, he's well, he's doing he's doing that. He's really done mm-hmm. it the last two games, didn't he? Again, and he's done it a few times this season. It worked against Crystal Palace, and it hasn't looked mm-hmm. to have worked. These last few times, he's well. This he's one, at least, to... we saw an uptick in play. You know, yeah, we looked more impressive at that point. So, um, okay, so mixed reactions on this one is basically where we're at on this. Um, and I, I, I think I would be more negative if I would have been out there in the cold with Max, with other supporters who were also negative. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think that kind of stuff mm. uh yeah that yeah. <laughs> um but we've got Spurs coming up this weekend. That's a thing. So we move on. So does the team. I'll be curious as to what Silva's going to do and who's healthy for that one. Cuz that'll affect a lot. Um we haven't talked as much about the defense. We're going to next segment. We're going to talk about defensive dilemma. We're going to uh talk about playing 5 in the back versus 4 in the back. Coleman getting subbed early, uh, and us going with Zuma at right back, which uh, Terry called. Just saying, and I'll probably say it again next next segment. Terry called it, uh, and then uh, Mina versus Zuma. A lot of people are reacting to Mina's play. Is this an overreaction or is this a sign of things to come? We'll discuss. Okay, so. But I guess that's it for the city reaction. If you've been digging the videos, please subscribe to the Top of Blues YouTube channel. We are uh, we're growing, and thank you for that because it's all you're doing. You're awesome. Uh, if you want a little bit more, a little a little bit of a little bit of Terry, check on the uh, Liverpool Echo fan jury. He writes stuff about Everton on there, a lot of Everton analysis. He'll tell you on Twitter where he, when he's on there. Also, Maximiliano, uh, he'll tell you when he's uh, when he shows up on uh, various podcasts, and he also does written analysis for uh, the Toffee Blues website and other places as well. So. Look out for these guys. All right. Uh, Yeah, let's move on. Defensive Dilemma coming up next segment. And bye.